Hello, Mount Holyoke Psychology 201 students. Welcome to your pre-work tutorial on Factorial ANOVA. This is your lab instructor, Natasha. So I've been thinking about exam periods coming up, and I wanted to look at trends from past reading days. So let's say I pulled statistics student, students from last semester, and I wanted to see if their exam scores were different based on whether they listened to music while studying, and whether they studied in their room, the library, or at Thirsty Mind. So in this data set, um, the variable music is um, asking whether they listen to music while studying for their exam. So their responses are either no or yes. And um, when asked where they studied for exams, their responses are either Thirsty Mind, their room, or the library. And then this was their exam grade um, from last semester. Again, this is made up data. So when thinking about this design of the factorial ANOVA, uh, the first factor would be music listening, and it has two levels, either yes or no. And the second factor, location, has three levels, either a thirsty mind, the room, or the library. So this would be a two by three ANOVA. To run this in SPSS, first we'll go to Analyze, down to the General Linear Model, and over to univariate. In this case, the dependent variable is their exam grade, and the factors are music and location. When you look over at the options button and click that, you're going to want to click descriptive statistics, which will give us the means for each of these groups. You'll also want to click on EM means, which is estimated marginal means. You'll want to bring over both factors, music, location, and the interaction of music and location to the display means for box. Then you'll click compare main effects and we'll choose the Bonferroni for the confidence interval adjustment and click continue. Now you'll click OK and you'll see that a lot of things come up in the output window, so don't get overwhelmed. Here we go. This first table, the between subjects factors, tells us how many people responded um, in each group. So for um, music, 21 students did not listen to music, 23 did listen to music, 15 reported studying at the Thirsty Mind, 15 in their room, and 14 in the library. This next table is the descriptive statistics table, and it tells us their, uh, the mean exam grades for each of these groups. So the way to read this, um, this mean refers to the people who did not listen to music and studied at Thirsty Mind. Um, this next row is for students who did not listen to music and studied in their room. Uh, the next row is students who did not listen to music and studied in the library. And this final is um, the overall, all of the students, regardless of where they studied, um, if they did not listen to music, this was their mean. Um, then this next section for students who did listen to music and studied at the Thirsty Mine, students who did listen to music and studied in their room, studies who, students who did listen to music and studied in the library, and again, all the students, regardless of where they studied, um, but did listen to music, Here's their score. And then this final section, this is the total for everyone who studied at the Thirsty Mind, regardless of whether they listened to music, everyone who studied in their room, regardless of whether they listened to music, and everyone who studied in the library. Okay, this next table is the test of between subjects effects table. And there's different information that you'll want to pull out from here. The degrees of freedom um, gives us both the within and between groups. Um, degrees of freedom, so you can see this row gives us for when we're looking at the music degrees of freedom, location, the interaction, and then the between groups um, degrees of freedom of 38. This next column is the mean square and when you're reporting in APA format the the um, fact or the statistic you'll want to look at is the mean square error. So you go to mean square and down to the error row. So for all um, F sentences that you'll write this will be the mean square error. Um, the next column F gives us the F statistic for both of the main effects of music and location as well as the interaction. And this final column gives us the p-values for each of the main effects and the interaction. So the p-value for music is above 0 0.05, so there was no significant main effect for music. Um, the p-value for location was under 0 0.05, so there is a significant main effect for location. 
And then the interaction has a p-value of 0 0.078, which is above 0 0.05, so there was no significant interaction. So in this case, the only post-hoc that we have to look at is for location, um, the main effect of location, because that was the only main effect um, that was significant. So now underneath here, um, there are the estimated marginal means for all of the groups. So again, we're interested in looking at the pairwise comparisons um, of location. So um, these first three all have to do with music, so we can skip over these and look at location. Um, so this gives us the mean and standard error and the confidence interval information for each of the three locations. And then this pairwise um, comparisons table tells us where the significant differences are. Um, so again, anything that any significant pairs um, differences will be um, marked with an asterisk. In this case, there's only one, it's just repeated twice. So the difference between room, the people who studied um, in their room or studying in their library had a significant difference in their exam scores. You can see this under the um, SIG column, the p-value for these um, is 0 0.029. Again, this is the same information, just repeated backwards, so the library in the room here. Okay, so um, nothing else is significant. So there's no other significant differences. So there's no significant difference between whether you studied in Thirsty Mind or your room or Thirsty Mind in the library. It's only between people who studied in their rooms in the library that had a significant difference. Um, and again, looking at these means, we can see that the people who studied in the library um, scored significantly higher on their final exams than those who studied in their room. So when you, um, want to discuss your overall um, results, you'll want to discuss um, both the main effects and the interaction, and anything that is significant, you'll want to mention direction. So in this case, again, um, there was no main significant main effect for music. Um, there was a significant main effect for location. However, only um, those who studied in the library had significantly higher exam scores than those who studied in their room. There were no other significant differences in location. And then there was no significant interaction between music and location. That's how you would report your results for this factorial ANOVA. Again, as always, um, these pre-work example um, data sets are made up, so you don't have to base your, um, what you do for this coming lab, this coming exam period based on this data. Um, I hope this helps you, and until next time, remember, don't be mean, be above average.